Well, President Obama has been in office almost five years now. And this week, for the 19th time in his presidency, he's turning his attention to the economy. In other words, after five years and 18 tries, the economy is still weak. But that's not even the shocking news. The shocking news is that President Obama, in making his latest economic speech, had the gall to say this. With this endless parade of distractions and political posturing and phony scandals, Washington's taken its eye off the ball. And I'm here to say this needs to stop. This needs to stop. You know those phony scandals like Benghazi and how the IRS has targeted conservative groups and the Justice Department snooping on reporters and the calls they make? Really, Mr. President? Phony scandals? Well, here to discuss with me Crystal Wright, founder of conservativeblackchick.com, and Emily Miller, who is the senior editor for The Washington Times and author of the book, Emily Gets Her Gun, <laughs> but not in New York. <laughs> Emily, uh, it's great to have you and Crystal here today. The scandals that have rocked the Obama administration, and there are a litany of them, are these phony? Of course they're not phony. I mean, that's the president's effort at, at, just, at pushing them off himself. I mean, Benghazi is four Americans dead, one ambassador. That's not phony. The IRS targeting conservative groups, that's not phony. That's terrifying. I mean, the Justice Department is snooping into the emails and phone calls of reporters who don't appreciate Obama's agenda. They probably have yours. I'm sure they yeah, are. And in the <laughs> NSA, too, right now, yeah. listening to us. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they are, you know, we're not on their agenda, so they just completely ignore the First Amendment, the Fourth Amendment. The Second Amendment. Crystal, how does he get away with First though? Amendment. Yeah, but, but Crystal, how does he get away with saying these are phony scandals? You know, and, and I mean, they're clearly not phony to the people whose lives have been completely upended by them. But will the press hold this president and his administration accountable? Oh, sadly, Governor Huckabee, no. And I think mm. the reason being is that the liberal media is stuck on the fact that President Obama is the first black president. And what's well, I guess what's odd and troubling to me is he's always talking about himself in the third person. You know what he says on his economic um, speech tour? Washington has taken its eye off the ball. Well, the last time I looked, Mr. President, you're commander in chief. You you're the biggest head of Washington. And instead of focusing on Trayvon Martin's death, you know, that was really, remember last week this time, mm -hmm. President Obama pushed himself in the news cycle by taking up the, the murder of, of Trayvon Martin after a jury found George Zimmerman not guilty. That is not an important topic of national concern. It was beneath the office of the president. And frankly, like you said, why hasn't he been talking about jobs in the economy for the last five years? It's, he keeps talking about this laser know. that he needs to put, put the focus on. Right. Obviously, his laser's out of batteries or something. <laughs> Right, I mean, he, well, the thing is, his, his latest pivot, as you said, he keeps pivoting. It's basically just running in circles this past five years. But his latest pivot is because his poll numbers are plummeting, mm -hmm. plummeting. He's lost nine points since April. And it's all due to the phony scandals, as he right. calls them. You know, people are, have Obama fatigue at this point. They're tired of this. Every week, it's something else. It's another abuse of power. And so his numbers are falling because he's not. So he's trying to save. The problem, though, is the polls also show that 56% of Americans disapprove of his performance with, on the economy. Mm. Yeah. I, 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 go ahead. Uh, no, I was going to say I agree with absolutely everything Emily said. It's the poll numbers that are below 50 percent, like Emily said. And I would argue, really, Mr. President, your presidency is phony. Because, you know, <laughs> no, seriously, I mean, we joke about this. But when does the president take responsibility for something? Oh, when things are going well, which isn't often in this presidency. I captured bin Laden thanks to the Bush policies that were put in place after 9-11. And, and I just think, like you said, when is the media going to wake up to this president? It's well, let's sad. talk about also this week, the same speech in which he was calling these phony scandals the first time he surfaced, and now he's repeating it a dozen times. There were some college Republicans who had tickets to the event. Uh, you know, they were going to go and hear the president's speech. They were denied admission to the event because they were deemed a security risk. Emily, is it... You know, is is there something dangerous about being a college Republican that I haven't heard about? Well, it's there's something dangerous apparently if you challenge Barack Obama. Mm. And, you know, it's it's shocking. I think that is absolutely shocking. All these kids were doing is wearing, apparently, Republican-esque T-shirts or Tea Party T-shirts, um, and they were denied entry. And I think 
I think there should be, this short story's got to be more played. And these kids, I think the only way the president can make it up to them, invite them to the White House and let them talk. Let them have their time with him. I mean, apparently, you know, he disagrees with their right to assemble. He disagrees with their right to free speech. So, you know, at what, where do we draw the line with this? You know, we're just going to only have people allowed around the president who agrees with him? Crystal, you think that's going to happen? This Maybe uh, we'll, we'll call it a beverage summit of some kind? <laughs> Have soda pop and yeah. popcorn <laughs> with the college Republicans. Well, right. doubtful. It's an idea. Yeah, I, I like Emily's there. idea. And I, I, I'm, if anyone from the White House is watching Fox, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Emily, I'm going to push the president to do this. But, but in all seriousness, as Emily pointed out before, this president flouts the First Amendment, the Second Amendment, the Fourth Amendment. I mean, he basically thinks the Constitution is there. Oh, it's inconvenient for me. And I think the thing about the college Republicans is, and I remember, I don't know if I was talking about this with Emily before the show, but that. I thought the president of the United States of America means he's president of all Americans. And so we all have a right to assemble. We all have a right to hear his audience and his speeches. And they were civil, these kids, you know, in Missouri, I think it was. They, they protested a little bit in advance of his speech. I don't know about you, but anybody who's ever been to college, been a college student, you know, you get you get a bee in your bonnet, you're going to protest over something. I mean, that's I kind of always enjoy it when people like... come and protest at my speeches. I feel like I must be significant enough to have earned the protest. Exactly. I'm Exactly. But I'm not going to protest you guys being here. I'll have you back, both of you. It's been yeah, great. Be great. Crystal, Emily, yep. really great you. to have yep. you. Thanks.